go. All right. Thank you for watching. Another episode of Changes Made by the Joseph Smith Translation of the Bible. We are deep into the epistles now. Second Corinthians. And we've got four chapters on this one. Chapter 5. King James says, For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. There we go. Paul is talking about uh, himself and the other apostles and what they do. <clears throat> what he actually wrote was, For we bear record that we are not beside ourselves. For whether we glory, it is to God. Whether we be sober, it is for your sakes. Okay. <clears throat> so, they are not beside themselves. In other words, they are doing something for God and or with God. <clears throat> and 16. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea. Though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet we henceforth know... Henceforth know we him no more. So they knew him, they don't know him. You gotta be honest, Dave. <laughs> you think, if you're honest, that doesn't make much sense there. It doesn't flow real well. Here is what Paul actually wrote. Wherefore, henceforth live we no more after the flesh. Or we live after the flesh. Yea, though we once lived after the flesh, okay, that's what happened, once lived after the flesh, yet since we have known Christ, we henceforth live no more after the flesh. Okay, so they know Christ, and they don't live after the flesh anymore. Okay, one of these things gets us to the appendix. Um, chapter 6, verse 1, King James says, we then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Okay. And this one's a small change here. Instead of with him, the King James translators should have written with Christ. Not a dramatic change there, but the, the best translation that we could have of what Paul wrote does not use the pronoun and, okay, now we are on to, okay, 11. Mm, all right, and, uh, which one is the one where we get to go to the appendix? Oh, no, Galatians. Galatians, okay. Um... 23. King James says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent. In deaths oft. Let's see. And what he actually wrote are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I speak as a fool is in parentheses. 23. So am I. Not, uh, yeah, so it does, shouldn't have the word more there. So am I. <clears throat> okay, not I am more. So Paul is comparing himself to people in a more of an equal way than what the King James makes it sound like. Okay, then Paul writes in 29, Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not him? That was the King James Version. <clears throat> so Paul's letting us know that he has sympathy or his similarities with other people. <clears throat> um, at the end of this it says, Who is offended, and I, here is the Joseph Smith translation correction, Anger not. Anger. It's not burn, it's anger. Okay. And 13. Alright. 
Several of the epistles end with the words, Greet one another with a holy kiss. <clears throat> As with the other ones, it should have been salutation. And it hasn't been very long. We're going to cover more than one book in this episode. On to the Galatians! <clears throat> okay. And verse 10. For do I now persuade men, or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Okay. And here's an example of one of these Joseph Smith translation corrections that even if a, another Christian is not going to agree with it, they really shouldn't get fired up about it because he says, now do I persuade men or God? Paul sounds like he's trying to persuade God there, or asking if he should persuade God. And it says, or do I seek to please men? In the second clause of this verse. Uh, for if I yet please men. So twice it talks about pleasing men. Well, <clears throat> that first sentence or clause in this verse should have been translated, or in other words, the best translation for what Paul actually wrote is, please men, for do I now please men or God? There we go. So it's not a matter of convincing God and persuading God, it's pleasing God. Alright, chapter 2, verse 4. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Okay. But neither, the verse before it is, uh, we should read to understand more of what's going on here. Context. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Okay. But, but neither Titus was compelled to... So Titus didn't end up being circumcised. <sighs> Let's see. This verse actually starts out, verse 4, Notwithstanding, there were some brought in by false brethren, unawares, who... There we go. So it starts out, King James Version, and because of false brethren. And uh, verse 4, notwithstanding, there were some brought in by false brethren. <clears throat> and Galatians 3 and 4, there should be something on 3. Alright, here's where we get to go through the appendix. King James says, Wherefore, this is verse 29, Wherefore, then serveth the law. It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was, or, it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a med mediator of one, but God is one. <clears throat> so this verse is clearly... Paul explaining about the law of Moses, why it was, or how it came to be. <clears throat> what Paul actually wrote was, or whichever letter writer this was, I'm saying Paul because Paul wrote the vast majority of the epistles in the New Testament, so if it doesn't have a name of the writer, but it's named after who it was sent to, it probably was Paul that wrote it. Wherefore, then the law was added because of transgression, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made in the law given to Moses, who was ordained by the hand of angels to be a mediator of this first covenant, the law. Now this mediator was not a mediator of the new covenant, but there is one mediator of the new covenant, who is Christ, as it is written in the law concerning the promises made to Abraham and his seed. Now Christ is the mediator of life, for this is the promise which God made unto Abraham. There we go. 
a little bit more explanation about how important Jesus Christ is. And 24 says, King James, Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. <clears throat> um, this was a... Let's see. B. Okay, this one starts out correct. Wherefore, the law was our... Here's where the Joseph Smith translation takes effect. Schoolmaster until Christ. Okay. Not to bring us to Christ, but to until Christ. All right. Good. Um, yeah, the law of Moses was given to hold, to teach us until Jesus Christ came. <clears throat> Okay, now Ephesians only has one chapter, and now there's somebody yelling, See, Mormons don't know the Bible! There's more than one chapter in Ephesians. I mean one chapter that has a Joseph Smith translation correction. It's chapter 4, <clears throat> which had a scripture mastery when I was growing up. Um, scripture mastery or just scriptures that some verses of scriptures that are, were especially important for us to learn when I was going to church in the morning before I went to high school. Let's see, 26 says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Ooh, I get to be mad at people and not sin? Doesn't that violate the Sermon on the Mount? Oh, when the Lord said... Whoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of judgment or hellfire. <clears throat> Alright, what Paul actually wrote was, Can ye be angry and not sin? There we go. Can ye be angry and not sin? Question <clears throat> mark. So he's reminding us that, you know, your anger is a sin. We need to forgive other people. Okay, and thank you for watching. That's it for this episode where we covered three books in the Bible. You have a good day.